Hello fellow ham operators and experimenters. This is W0ERE, Al Gallo, along with my buddy N0SAP, whose picture you see here. There's a mug shot of me. We are taking off to Dayton, Ohio for the 2013 Hamvention. 7 o'clock in the morning, leaving Nixa, Missouri. A little bit of a cloudy day, but it turned out to be a beautiful trip. Nine hours of experimenting with amateur radio beacons. We're using a 30 meter amateur radio beacon which incorporates a Vectronix tuner, a iPhone which is tuned to a maidenhead locator to get our grid squares and our long and latitude. You can see the picture there. We also have a FT817 as the transmitter. We have a controller to the right of that and then we have our telegraph key for programming. As we move down the road I program the beacon for the grid square because it changes continually as we move. Sap drives a car. He handles the communication on 17 and 40 meter sideband. I strictly run the beacon. And when you look at the pictures of this, you'll notice how we constructed the beacon. You have to make a, in this case, a ball mount mounted on a a mount that goes on back of the door of the SUV. We have two Allen wrench screws which we tighten on the door and that causes it to clamp down so we can put a a stick in the air about four feet and on the end of that stick or that the radiator rod we tie Litz wire. Very light weight wire. It seems like thread. It is so lightweight. You can hardly even see it but it radiates a beautiful signal. Look up LITZ wire. Sap is standing behind a car at approximately 18, 19 feet in back of it. The Litz wire actually vibrates between 16 and 18 feet like a tadpole. You can barely see it. At 70 miles an hour, if you're 18 feet in back of us, you're way too close. This is the picture of the vehicle from the front. There are four antennas. On the passenger side, you see the 30 meter Hustler antenna. And of course, in back, what you can't see there is the, is the wire coming out from the uh, the Litz wire from the mounting, the mooring, which is on the passenger side back. As we travel down the road, the wire lifts at approximately 35 miles an hour and hovers about 6 to 8 feet above the ground. There are a total of four antennas mounted on the vehicle. You can get a, a picture of them basically right here. The trip took us nine hours. It went very fast. Inside, you notice how we have a switch set up for antenna switching to go from one antenna to another. And uh, you can see where Sap's driving the car. And I'm the guy with the bobbling head on the right side. And there I am controlling the beacon. Sierra Alpha Papa, Mobile, Missouri. What you've seen was a picture of us going down the road. There was nobody beeping at us or pointing at us or thinking, wow, you got a wire sticking out of the back. As we're going down the road, we're traveling between 60 and 75 miles per hour. The weather was beautiful. The antenna worked fine. We didn't have a stitch of problems. We talked to a lot of guys on 5.2 and on 17 and 40 meters. We received MP3 files on the iPhone. We arrived in Dayton. There we are getting out of the vehicle. And uh, we meet my buddy Bob Heil. Bob, we appreciate the episode 97 of Ham Nation where you introduced the 30 meter mobile beacon to the ham public. We really appreciate it because we got a lot of action based on your information passed on. 
We also appreciate Sarah, your wife, and you for all you do for the ham operators in this country and this world for that matter. And uh, you're to be applauded for uh, doing all the things you do. Thank you for being my friend for so long and thank you for being a fellow experimenter. In the 60s we had a lot of technology and boy we sure experimented, didn't we buddy? Anyway, thank you all for listening and seeing this video. Listen for my beacon on 10.12925. Thank you.